Cardiac Awareness Month, a disease that affects hundreds of thousands of Canadians. Nicole Byram is a registered dietitian and joins us now with more. Thank you so much for being here, Nicole. Thanks for having me. So let's just let people know, what is celiac disease? I think it's one of those that you, you hear it and you're like, what is that? And it can be very confusing. Yeah, it can. So first of all, happy Celiac Awareness Month. May yes. is Celiac Awareness <laughs> Month. So celiac disease is a genetically predisposed autoimmune disease where the protein gluten, which is found in barley, rye, regular oats and wheat, damages the small intestinal lining of the gut. And this in turn causes both short and long-term complications. Wow. Yeah. So it's, it's an autoimmune, like you said. It's an autoimmune People disease. People say, oh, it's an allergy. It's more Very nice. common myth. Very yeah. common myth, yeah. Yeah. I think for restaurants, it makes it easier for it them does. to understand. It's the language that everybody understands. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, but yeah, it's more than that. So what are some of the signs and symptoms in case people are wondering? I think a lot of people uh, don't even want to recognize necessarily the signs and symptoms because they don't want to give up the gluten. I know. It's, it's hard. hard. <laughs> it's hard. There's a grieving process in that yeah. for sure. Mm -hmm. So there are 260 symptoms of celiac disease, none wow. of which are unique to celiac disease, which is one of the reasons why this disease is so underdiagnosed. The, dis the symptoms come in three categories. We have our classic symptoms, our non-classic symptoms, and our neurological symptoms. The classic symptoms are things like nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, constipation, pain, bloating, gas. These are the more gastrointestinal symptoms that tend to be caught earlier, and people with these symptoms are diagnosed sooner. Mm -hmm. Then we have our non-classic symptoms, anemia. Anemia is one of the number one non-classic symptoms. Increased liver enzymes, infertility, osteoporosis and osteopenia. We have kids coming in with broken bones and they're wondering why. Mm -hmm. And then we have our neurological complications, which are gaining a lot more awareness now. And these are things like brain fog, ataxia, uh, con um, uh, neurological complications like um, numbness in your yes. fingers and that kind of stuff. So yeah, Feeling dizziness, dizzy. yeah. yeah. That whole thing, and like you said, the fatigue that yes. some people yeah, feel, fatigue's right? a big one. So I guess, where's the problem here? Uh, are people, is it the doctors or the people? Who's not necessarily giving the right yeah. information or asking the right questions? Yeah, so diagnosis is a, is a, is a big issue. And Celiac Canada is actually trying to drive diagnosis here. We put out a state of celiac survey and um, trying to really increase the awareness and the education on when to diagnose. So diagnosis takes about 10 years here in Canada, which is too long, 10 years of suffering. And so we really want to um, increase the awareness of when to diagnose. And what we're trying to do is put out some new clinical guidelines to really guide people on when to diagnose. Okay. Yeah, and the diagnosis doesn't have to be super complicated. It can be as simple as a blood draw. That uh -huh. already comes on the requisition form. It's not a special ask. It is a special ask. It is. Oh. It is. So that's something else we're advocating okay. for. Thank you for bringing that up. Yeah. Um, currently, it is an actual, an additional write-on on the requisition form, so we want it to be a tick box. And so that's one of the things that Celiac Canada is also advocating for. But it is just a simple blood draw. So if you, if you have one of these signs or symptoms and you're wondering about it, go to your doctor and ask for a blood test. It's a, a TTG IgA blood test. It stands for tissue transglutaminase. But in order for the test to be accurate, you do need to have gluten in your system. And not just for 24 or 48 hours beforehand, but for six to eight six to 12 weeks beforehand, because in order for the test to be accurate, we really want this read to be accurate. And then once you get that positive TTG test, you then can go on to get an intestinal biopsy, which is the gold standard for diagnosis here. Um, now, if you're a child, then you might be able to do a non-biopsy approach. So talk to your physician or your gastroenterologist about that as an option for your child. Yeah, and for kids, particularly concerning, because it can also stunt their growth, mm -hmm. other kinds of issues. Short stature, dental enamel defects, those are two of the biggest things for children. Okay, so yeah, mommy, my tummy hurts. Yeah, Maybe yeah. get that checked out. Yes, definitely. <laughs> More than just you ate too much. You never yeah, know. You yeah. Never know. Uh, there's a fundraising campaign at celiac.ca as well right now if you would like yes. to check that out. And yes. Because any funds, I'm sure, are appreciated. <laughs> yes, always. It's a charity, so we always appreciate any donations. Okay. Well, thank you so much for coming thank in. Thank you. Nicole Byram, uh, registered dietitian and also with Celiac Canada. Yes. And Thanks. if anybody wants to speak to me individually, um, freshstartnutrition.ca. Okay. Sounds great. Thank you yeah, so much for having me. <laughs> Thanks.